Hi, I'm back. This is Alex C. I would like to now proceed to do the demonstration. This is the recording for the LabVIEW Developers Day 2016 at Singapore. The topic of my sharing was on introduction to using variants and variant attributes. Let me switch you over to LabVIEW. I have created several uh, demos to illustrate the points. Let me open the first demo. In this demo over here, I've created a simple 1D array lookup feature. right? I, uh, and you can see over here, I have created an array string of usernames. So I decided to search for this particular username. So I've used a function called the search 1D array function. Okay, then i am used the index array to extract the position. Okay, feeding this index number to this index array to extract the employee's information when the record is found. So let me switch you over to the front panel as you can see. So for instance, if I were to look for a particular username which I've created, uh, these are just some uh, dummy user IDs, right? So I've chosen uh, YTR9, for example. So it's actually at the last record here. So let's switch on the highlight execution and run this program. Okay, now although the search 1D array seems pretty fast, okay, and it's managed to find the record, uh, this search 1D array lookup is actually through the use of a linear search method, right? So uh, it actually really takes a lot of, there's no much improvement in terms of the performance because the search is linear in this example over here. So, and it's able to find the particular user ID, okay, at the index record of 16, for example. So this is a pretty much sim very simple uh, uh, code here. Now let's go and take a look at the second uh, demo. Okay, second demonstration here. Now in this uh, second demonstration, okay, uh, I have an array of clusters of employee. So this time round, I've actually have a bit more information. Okay, I put in in this uh, cluster. I use a cluster. I have the name of the employee, the username, the department where the employee is, staff ID and years of service for example now just bear in mind that all these names and employees are fictitious one okay it's not real huh? so this is okay so i decided to use a search name user uh, name to search right i'm using the user name over here okay so let me switch you over to the uh, block diagram code here so what i did was i have an array of clusters of employee passing it into a for loop right with the auto indexing and enable so uh, in this way as you can see in this demo it's a very simple basic comparison search huh? when we unbundle the username and I actually just do a very simple comparison okay search in lab view right so let's have a quick look over here so uh, if moving you back to the front panel if my username that I would like to search is say uh, this particular one KML3 okay so switch you over so if I were to switch on the highlight execution and click the run button you can see that the method of searching is through a linear search again right although it makes the code very readable but there is no um, performance improvement or, in, or enhancement in this way of search okay so, and it's also pretty slow right if it's the worst case condition, your data that you're trying to search is the last element, then there's practically no improvement in the data, in the performance. Right, so let me switch you to the next one, which is the third demo using a variant approach. All right, now what you can see is that I have created an array of clusters. Now I added some more further, some more additional information, which I've included the 
mobile number, mobile phone number. I've also included a box, uh, so-called color box information. Okay, color box information for the staff. It could be their staff badge, uh, for example. Uh, over here, I've used the username as the key. Remember, in my earlier sharing, I mentioned about using the key value pair. So this is the record, right? And this is the username. So let's switch over to see what the code looks like over here. Now what you can see is that uh, uh, through this using of a variant, I've created a dummy variant at the start. Okay, I passed this array of clusters of information okay, into a for loop with the auto index of the for loop enabled. So what I'm trying to do here when I use this set uh, variant attribute, all right, okay, I'm actually trying to create this key value pair over here, right? So I've extracted the username, which is the variant key, and passing that record into this set variant attribute to generate this uh, key value pairs of data and putting a shift register around this so that I want the data to be persistent. Then when I'm completed doing this generation, okay, I then proceed to use another function called the get variant attribute in which now I search for the username which is the variant key. Right, and I can find the record, the variant value as well. If I were to proceed further to use the convert variant to data, I can actually extract the clusters of information here. All right. So let's have a quick look over here. If I were to switch on the highlight execution and click run, okay, you can see that uh, the the generation of the key value pair is only done only once, right? So in fact, if we to go ahead to do uh, this approach, right, we can actually uh, create some kind of an API wrapper or action engine to wrap up this part here, which I will show you in the next uh, example or demonstration. So you can see that when I click say this particular uh, user ID JWS2, you can find the record and extract the information, relevant information pertaining to the employee, for example. Okay. Now this method of search has a real advantage uh, according to the uh, lab view R&D. Um, the uh, search method is uses a O log n search method versus the O n, which is the linear search. This is a much faster approach. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it uses some form of a binary tree uh, technique uh, when they do the search. So, which is pretty pretty good. Now, I would like to move on to look at the next one. Now, earlier I mentioned that the you can create some form of an API wrapper to wrap up. Yeah, that part where you generate the key value pair for the variant attribute. So what I have here is I have created one. So for example, this uh, action engine, there are two states. One is the initialize and then you generate the key value pair. So what I did was I've just encapsulated that part of the code that you saw earlier into this for loop, put it into this part of the case here for this action engine. Okay, then I would then show you the demo A, for example, over here, same thing, I'm going to look for the key, okay, so wrapping it into a uh, action engine or some form of API would make your code neater, right, and by doing a get variant attribute, okay, by inserting the key, you are able to do likewise, like what I have shown you earlier, to extract the relevant information that you need, so if I were to say click the run button, you can determine which set of uh, key that you are trying to find and to extract the data accordingly. Okay, now I would like to move on to the next demo, which is demo 4B. Okay, now over here, what I have done is that I have actually now added something else. I mean, now if you recall in my presentation, I talk about the ability to have that. Uh, flexibility to insert 
uh, additional data into the uh, variant right so for example if I would like now to instead of just doing a simple search and getting the record I would also like to insert the timestamp uh, as well as the, the person who was doing that search in this case the operator so uh, let's switch you over to the block diagram so I have also uh, did likewise the same when you generated the key value pair okay but uh, in addition here just for the purpose of this demonstration I've created a simple state machine here right where I do a search for example the start first state goes with the search case search key case uh, where I extracted the data then uh, based on the variant key the next case will be because this is a simple state machine the next case that it switches to is this insert data so I'm going to show you here insert data over here what happens is that I'm I do a get variant attribute to extract the data right so I've uh, unbundled the cluster and reinserted the additional two information which is the timestamp as well as the operator name into this uh, bundle so basically what I did was I unbundled then rebundle the data again but with the additional information over here right and I have a new cluster let me just show you here right click okay I can uh, to see that there's an additional two more information that has been put in place here so let's and then I repack uh, rebundle the data back in, and then to do a set variant attribute again then I proceed to do the next state which is the display update updated key yeah? so over here you just uh, what you can see is just to uh, update the data so let me just quickly run this set of code to let you see it so you can see that the original data appears here now this is the updated data with the additional information of the timestamp as well as the name of the operator who was doing the update right so it's very powerful because there's dynamic behavior you can add in additional uh, data during runtime and the very final uh, demo I have demonstration that I have is the demo number five okay now it is a possible use case for example uh, good use for variant in a sense because let's say for example if you have a uh, quite a, a complicated say a front panel and you want to uh, have yeah, many controls and indicators on your front panel program right as shown over here now over here what you can see on the, the block diagram I've actually created um, through some use of a, a VI server now I would like to uh, obtain the control reference control references for the front panel objects that could be controls that could be indicators uh, uh, there are two approach one is at the top here is through the use of the traditional approach using a linear search at the bottom here is this thing using the variant attribute approach where we generate the key value pair okay so usually the first approach is that we use we search by using the label text we find the match and return the control reference at the bottom here when we generate the key value pair all right and you store it into a sheet register you can do a search using the key search uh, you can find the return of the uh, information for the control reference pretty simple quite fast or if you decided not to uh, leave the key here as unwired for the get variant attribute function okay the the function itself will return to you all the keys and all the uh, control reference so as you can see over here right so if I were to just click a run right it will return the over here the control reference number as well as the information that we want over here okay so that is all for my uh, final demo demonstration for demo number five thank you for watching